Hello and welcome to the next re-vlog, Breakfast with James edition. So, what am I doing today and why has it been so long? Because it's been a few weeks now since the last one of these as far as I can tell. Well, I have been both busy and very tired. Uh, my sleep has been a mixture of bad and good as opposed to the usual in-between state that I've grown accustomed to. Um, my schedule's been topsy-turvy, blame Christmas. Um, there's been a lot of car troubles. My bike isn't doing great. The gears broke a couple months ago. Uh, so now it's a single speed, effectively. The brakes aren't good and are very loud. Um, and it squeaks occasionally when it's being pushed, but not when it's being ridden. But, fingers crossed, touch wood, all that good stuff, no punctures. Um, but yeah, car failed its MOT, got, is doing its re-MOT today. Um, though I'm half expecting it to fail because the start of it is, like, gone. I'm pretty sure, um, but who knows? And then, if it doesn't fail, then we need to sort out the starter motor. And if it does fail, we need to get someone else to sort out the starter motor. Or, we need to sort out the starter motor. I don't see why we didn't do that originally. Because it was like four months ago now that I was told by an AA guy, it's probably the starter motor's going. And lo and behold, the starter motor went. Whatever. But yeah, I have a client today in just under an hour and a half. Bit of sparring. I've noted that I just have claw hands now. This is my hands fully relaxed. Claw hands. Which means when I have guard up, kind of looks, if you look from an angle, like a loose-ish fist. I do have relaxed hands. They just naturally turn into claws now because I spend so much of my time with them in fists or gripping things. Um, whatever though. Uh, I just need to stretch them out more and do some of this to make sure my fingers bend backwards so that they get used to being straight as well as bent. It's a little annoying, but it's okay. I can do that and it'll straighten out. If I do that, it curls up. I need to have it more like that, I think. So I don't want it fully straight, but also claw hand. Arr. Um, but yeah, so that'll be good. I've got to do a nice warm up and stuff. So I have a sleeping room over here. If you could hear it, that was what that was. If you couldn't, I was making a rattling sound with the handles. But after the client taking the car to the MOT, then probably go home. And, uh, oh, this. anyway, uh, yeah, go home, do some housework, do some other work. I need to do some voiceover work today. Um, sadly, not as a professional video or anything, but voicing over some videos I've done for clients. Um, so for my online clients exclusively, I'm going to get some, uh, like YouTube videos, and I'm going to upload them on Unlisted and put links in their online forms for them to access so that they can look through them. So it'll be like a video of me doing a push-up and then I'll do voiceover effectively saying this is a push-up, also known as a press-up. The key points are, uh, things to watch out for are, um, and so on, and do that for a bunch of exercises. I'm going to have a huge catalogue eventually. Um, currently, I've done push-ups, sit-ups, crunches, or goblin crunches even, which is slightly different. Um, squats, and one more ah, leg raises. Um, 
that I've recorded the video for, but I need to do the audio, uh, which means I need to edit the video, all that good stuff. Probably have a breakdown at the end where it'll replay and pause at different points. But also, should, I'm going to have loads of stuff on there, including some cardio, so skipping, shadow boxing, warm ups maybe, who knows, um, or at least segments of warm ups, so it'll be like, here is a warm up for your wrist, here's a warm up for your elbows, here's a warm up for your shoulders. Here's one that's better for your shoulders if you're doing overhead press. Here's one's better for your shoulders if you're just sort of doing this. Side raises. Front raises. Back raises. Not that I would recommend those, really. Um, hmm. So that's what I'll be doing today. I also want to start working on the new tube channel, ha ha ha, new YouTube channel, um, and I'm going to be focused predominantly on D&D stuff, probably. Controversial D&D stuff too, being like, wizards are underpowered, uh, specifically a few subclasses, not wizards in general, but that won't be in the he heading or subtitle or whatever, because clickbait, because corporations and algorithms, and I hate it a lot, but that's okay. Um. <laughs> what next, eh? What else is there on my mentioning the bulls list? Uh, Rangers are broken. Uh, making a Benny Gesserit witch in 5e. They're the, they're like the first three ideas I have, but, like, um, skill master build, um, the true jack of all trades, master of all trades, um, I made one once, and I didn't enjoy playing them because it was, they were too good. So I played them for one or two sessions, and then retired them. Oh, Trixie. Sister of Peruin. Oh, that's a point. I need to give Peruin schooled a sister. So, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, which should theoretically be everyone who's watching this, I have remade Peruin at level one. Peruin being my first proper D&D character. Not my actual first D&D character. That was... Uh, Samael, uh, a tiefling ranger, and I didn't know how to play the game at the time, and we only played for a few sessions with the character. First campaign proper, where I knew how to play the game and stuff for the most part, with a DM who was experienced, was Peruin. T winged tiefling monk. Though, he wasn't winged, um, until he got the plague left and got blessed by God. I'm going to say he had the wings all the time, but his constitution wasn't high enough to be able to use them. After the blessing, his con and strength score got swapped, um, which doesn't make a great deal of sense because his strength score was then really low, so he shouldn't be able to fly. But whatever, it's just because I didn't know winged tieflings were a thing until then, and I asked the DM, hey, can I use wings? Um, and he was like, sure. So, yeah. So now it's winged tiefling, level one monk. At level 3, I'm planning to go into the dragon subclass. Um, Way of the Dragon is probably what it's called. I don't remember. However, because it's a remake of Pruin, different universe and everything, I uh, wanted to change a few things. So otherwise it'd be no fun to just play the same character at level one, because at that point, I'm just playing a character I've already played, and that's fine, but all the adventures he's had are gone, because um, he can't remember them, otherwise I have to nerf him somehow and be like, why is he now level one again? He lost his warlock powers, he lost a bunch of his monk abilities, how and why? 
that's not something I want to do to this character. Um, so I won't. Instead, what I'm doing is remaking them in an alternate reality. So, Peruin Schooled was P-E-R-U-E-N space S-K-A-L-A-A-L-D. There were some apostrophes as well, but I always moved them around whenever I had to rewrite it down because I kept forgetting where it was meant to be. I think, however, it's P-E-R apostrophe and then S-K-L apostrophe and then the rest of each word. Now it's per ruin schooled. So per as in as per, ruin as in war's horse in Darksiders or what happens if you blow something up, it then gets ruined. Um, and then schooled, as in someone who's been through education, is a schooled individual. Yeah. Uh, their parents did not name them very well. <laughs> However, um, you get the same uh, phonetic effect for the most part. Um, they now have three names. Their initials will be PRS as opposed to PS. Um... But, as Trixie was Peruin's sister, Peruin should also have one, or at least a sibling. So the original backstory for Peruin, and this hasn't come out in any of the games, is um, a universe was collapsing, and um, they shunted a baby out into another universe from hell. That baby was Peruin. Um, and yeah, it was a little, it was one of the gods shunted that baby out, the god that Peruin ended up following as he and his siblings escaped. So he's the sole survivor from his universe outside of the gods and maybe a few other people who might have been powerful enough to escape. However, a mysterious entity also got his sister. His sister was dead by the time... No, his sister hadn't died. They found his sister, who was younger than him. and Not by much, though, because they were both, like, infants at best. Um, and grabbed the sister, and this entity wasn't super powerful. So it had a weird form of dimensional hopping, which ended up killing the sister. And he felt really bad about it. So this mysterious entity used reincarnate on the sister, which is why Peruin is a winged tiefling and his sister was a goblin. Um, Peruin Scald, as opposed to Peruin Scald, may have a different backstory. Something more normal, perhaps. But probably not super normal. So. Born and raised in universe of whichever universe he ends up being in um, as he's going to be way of the dragon or the ascendant dragon I feel like that that rings a bell um, perhaps he has a family however he had a family is more accurate for a dragon raided his village his small village and he was the sole survivor, much like the sole survivor of his universe when it blew up. Um, and but this time he lived to like adolescence at least before then. And whilst he was obviously sad, his family died and stuff, he admired the strength of the dragon. And he, the only reason he was able to survive is because it unlocked something within him. The lucky fee. Because all characters should start with a fee. I'm not wrong. They should. I know it's not in the rules as written, but they should. So I'm going to give him lucky fee because it makes sense for him being the sole survivor. Again, uh, though he didn't have it in the previous one, but that's okay. He did have the mobile fee, I think. I don't know what I'm doing with my hand, but it's fun to watch. I'm going to stop. Um, yeah. It's... 
Da -da 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 -da. Oh no, there's going to be black bars either side of this video because the phone's vertical instead of horizontal. Carnations! Um, anyway. You have him as the sole survivor. Uh, but the dragon, perhaps, kidnapped his sister. So she can survive or potentially dies, gets reincarnated again because lots of dragons are powerful spellcasters. Could be Dragon wanted a kid, was like, there's one, I'll take it. Village fought back, village died, kid napped, and uh, it was good all round, really. Um, yeah, I, I'm just gonna be right back, because I think I heard a door close in the front garden. I did not. There was no, 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 there was no door closed in the front garden. Anyway, yeah, so that's the plan for him. Um, so the lucky boy is going to be there. Maybe or maybe not his sister will come into play at some point. Entirely up to the DM. Um, unless I decide to switch characters at some point, at which point I'll be like, Trixie returns! But this time, instead of being the skill master that she was, Which, by the way, was hilarious, because um, she had the guidance cantrip, along with expertise, um, and something. Somehow she got advantage on athletics checks. I think it was an item or something that specifically gave her advantage on athletics checks. Um... And so, she, or at least grapple checks, she was able to get above 30 as a little goblin when she would normally have disadvantage on grappling, but what, because she was grappling a giant, um, and she's a small creature and it's a large creature, which is two sizes higher. Um, yeah, she managed to get 30 because she had plus five strength and expertise and they were level 11. Which I think you've got a plus three or four proficiency then. I think it's plus four. I think if it's level nine, it goes up to plus four. So that'll be plus eight. So that'll be plus 13. So she just had to roll a 17 to get plus 30. No, to get a total of 30 even. Quite redonkulous. Um, and I remember somehow... Um, oh yeah. Bardic Inspiration, my friend. Uh, she got a 42 Arcana check. A level 11 um, and was consistency consistently getting like high 20s to 30 but this time if she's being raised by a dragon probably as a dragonborn because that would make sense I think I'd make her a druid um, I've not played a druid since my kobold druid pet ear um, he was an actor, <laughs> um, but yeah, could put, make, could make her a druid or a wizard or a sorcerer or sorceress. Uh, it would make sense, um, especially because I think they've got more things for the chronic sorcerer. Not sure though. Or a warlock with a dragon patron. Lots of ways you could go. But no, Peruan would be the plan. And the main reason I've remade uh, Peruan as Per Ruin is I feel the the idea of this dragon subclass is so good because you get the breath weapon. Um, and you can use it multiple times. Um, unlike Dragonborns originally. And... It's really good, because the Dread Breath Weapon isn't huge damage. It gets pretty good, but it's not huge. Oh. Oh. Okay. I return again. This is a very weird video. However, um... Dragon Breath. Now. I'm in a pretty epic campaign where I am a dragon. Got supersonic force breath. 
um, where the idea, how I pitched it, is I want to play like a strength dragon, like a super tank, um, and effectively, my my thought was it was less of a breath weapon, and more he just flexes his throat muscles and diaphragm and stuff, and just expels the air so powerfully that it creates a mini sonic boom, um, and just pushes really hard. Um, that way it'd work underwater as well, but, you know, run out of air if it's normal breathing, but because it's a breath weapon, it's a magical thing, so potentially it could also work in a vacuum because it's just force, not necessarily carried on air or water or whatever, which is really cool, um, and I really like Alakan. I've added Alakan to a list of characters to be more like from my D&D things, which is now Sam and Alakan. Um, Sam the bugbear werebear barbarian what a guy uh, though Sam I don't put be more like Sam I put be the werebear I think however the thing is breath weapon normal humanoid walking around as an adventurer it's surprising how often people are like, you've got to leave your weapons here. We're going to tie your hands together so you can meet someone. Sure. And yes, they'll probably tie your hands behind your backs. But a monk is going to be pretty flexible. They're going to have high decks. And I don't know what skill people would tell people to use. Some people might just say, make a dex check. Some people say, oh, it's athletics because you've got to force yourself around. Some people might say it's acrobatics because it's all about being nimble. Some may say sleight of hand because, you know, you're moving your hands background in front of you. However, uh, if it's something that I can do, it's definitely something someone with 20 decks could do because I put my decks at like 16 tops. Um, it's probably more of like a 13, 14. You know, plus two is still respectable. It's not really top tier. I'll put like Olympians around 1819. Because I feel 20 is better. But then again, I don't respect the Olympics all that much. I respect the athletes, but not the Olympics itself. Um, anywho, if you get tied up, breath weapon. Doesn't matter, as long as they don't gag you. But even if they do, just burn through it if you're using fire breath. But every time you use it, you get to pick the element. And I think you get to pick between the classic dragon breath. So you've got fire, cold, lightning, poison, acid. I don't think I'm missing any off the top of my head. So, if, if like, you have to go and you're attempting to assassinate someone, for example, and you get caught and they fucking didn't gag you you're there and you've got like manacles so you've got even less wrist mobility that when if you're like this behind your back then there is like no way that you will be getting your arms around however that doesn't change the fact that you can still fire lightning at their face when you get brought before them um and that'd make an excellent roleplay moment because the guards would carry you in um or maybe this was your strategy all along Especially if you've got a rogue or a charisma rogue or rogue or a bard with you to like talk to guards and be like, oh no, you've caught us, take us to your leader. Um, then that you get taken to, to their leader, and their leader's like, <laughs> You thought that you could kill me? I have a leader, I have good guards. <laughs> you've been caught, now I kill you. And at which point the monk just starts smiling and they're like, what are you smiling for? You're going to die. Um, and then you're like, no, you're going to die. <laughs> then you can just tailor the element to whatever creature they are. So if you think they might be vulnerable to fire damage, go for the classic fire breath. If they're a water elemental, try lightning. I'm not sure whether they're vulnerable to lightning. Or cold, I feel like they should be vulnerable to both, or resistant to at least one of them. Um, 
But you know, you do your research on your target before you assassinate them, obviously. Um, but more importantly, if you aren't manacled, because let's be honest, what sort of patrol carries around manacles in multiple sets? Enough for a full party of adventurers, which we're going to say three to five. Makes sense. What random guards are going to carry around three to five sets of manacles on them, to be honest? Very, very few. So they're probably just going to tie with rope, maybe chain. Dragon Breath, I, I think, should be able to be focused and burn through it like a blowtorch. Like, it'll take longer to get the whole breath out through a pressurized focused beam. But as a DM, that's the sort of creative stuff that I love to have my players try and be like, okay, so I've got this Dragon Breath. It does like 3d6 points of damage across this huge area. Would I, like as an instantaneous effect, would I be able to focus and try to focus it in to increase the damage over a smaller area over time. And I'm like, yeah, man, you can do that. Make some checks for me. And that'd be great. And hopefully, they would. I'm really glad whenever my uh, friends make those sorts of questions to me when I DM. Um, it doesn't happen super often, but whenever it does, it's amazing. Much like, if when I ever get back to running Kriyanar, I'm really excited to see if Yusa might continue to look for Judas. To see how Lobo, I think it's Lobo, interacts with the rest of the group. Um, to see if they actually, those with them, actually use their jelly powers that they've been granted. Because they don't get used very much, even though they are super useful. Like, Usamite is literally just damage reflection. Jack can teleport with the range of sight. Which, considering they're going to be flying around on diplomatic missions in a gigantic um, airship, he could teleport to the ground, see what's going on, and teleport back up again. Will he? Who knows? Um, what was the Ossifer Jelly? Um, I can't remember who had the Ossifer Jelly. I feel like it was either, um, Seamus, may he retire in peace, or... Killian. There could have been Davran. Or Verdon. I don't remember. But yeah, I'm really excited to, if I ever get back to running that, which I may not, but if I do, just seeing what all the characters do. Though I will admit I'm more excited um, to play uh, a straight up actual D&D game again. So I'm in a Dark Heresy game. I'm in the game where I'm a dragon. Technically, I'm in a uh, Game of Thrones setting campaign, though I don't know when that's going to be picking up again. I'm in a Star Wars game, um, which is Edge of Eternity or Edge of Empire. I don't remember. They are all really fun. I really enjoy them. And thanks, guys, for running them. It is, you know, keeping me saner than I otherwise might be. However... I miss the general mystique and like fantasy nature of a standard D and D game. The ones where we're dragons is closest, but because we're dragons and there's not like skill trees or anything, we just sort of level up. We don't get. I I really enjoy planning characters, which I can't do, and that's providing its own unique thrill that I'm really enjoying, especially considering the level up process as a dragon, uh, Sean. DM, thanks if you're watching this again, um, would, uh, has set out conditions which make sense for dragons to uh, level up. So it is, you need a horde, and you need a slumber, and experience. The experience is an invisible thing that he gives us, we don't know, 
The Horde uh, can be anything, so long as it is the same thing for the dragon, though I imagine if the dragon had a massive personality realignment, it could change. For example, if they were under the effect of a uh, magical item that forcibly reversed their alignment, say, my one is neutral good, then there'd be neutral evil. Neutral evil probably wouldn't want respect so much, um, which is what my horde is. Admiration and respect, they would probably want fear and turn into a tyrant, uh, which that would be its own unique cool thing. But um, then the slumber gets longer, the bigger and older, more powerful you get, you need to rest more. And the slumber cannot be interrupted at all, otherwise you have to start again at day zero. And for perspective, to get from level one to level two, so a yearling to a wormling, uh, which is effectively a tiny baby to a toddler, uh, was one whole week with nothing interrupting us. So the next one's probably going to be like a month, then maybe six, then a year, then five, then a decade then a century, so on, something like that. That's really cool, and during the level up process we have dreams. Um, and what we, the choices we make in those dreams seem to affect the powers we get uh, as we progress. So my, my dragon has cursed blood, had a dream about some like tainted items, and I tried to break them and got the ability to remove weak curses, uh, which is really cool, and I think that works best with his personality, because whilst he is, you know, literally cursed, uh, he is just, he's just a nice, if naive, guy. Anyway, I've been rambling for the last half an hour, so this is going to take forever to upload. I've got to do my skipping. My client will arrive now in, like, 56 minutes. Uh, so I'm going to go... 56? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I'm going to leave, um, and I'll catch you cats on the flip-flop. Got the Infinity Maze this evening, uh, which is always good fun. Don't know if it'll be streamed. If it will, it'll be on the Dove and Shorts Twitch channel around 7pm, probably half past. Um, I'll be in a Christmas jumper, and I hope to see you there. Goodbye. <laughs>